the best bits of Joy Drive. Theatre, film, TV and more. Susie Rung reviews it all on Joy Drive with Em and Warren. Just with Warren, but hello Susie, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Hey, when when you were a teenager, mm-hmm. what was school like for you? Um, it's interesting, isn't it? Because I found uh, the last few years of primary school a real struggle and the first couple of years of high school a real struggle as well, to be honest with you. I mean, lots of bullying, um, you know, all that, that stuff that we go through. Yeah, I struggled with it. What about you, Susie? Oh, Oh. No, I was <laughs> I was in a boys' school. I was in a boys' school for four years oh. uh, in Singapore in the eighties, so it wasn't pretty. Like um, over there, I think that there are lots of uh, there's lots of discipline, so you kind of rarely get into physical uh, violence sort of situation, but. Obviously, there was a lot of ostracism, and, and I, I've guessed that there is a lot of bullying. How, why were you bullied? Well, I, I, look, to be honest, I think I was just different. I really don't know. And even I remember it was grade uh, three, grade three or four, I remember lining up. And, you know, when the bell went and everyone would line up in their grades in the courtyard before we were walked into our class. And I remember the very time that these guys went, oh, my God, Warren's gay. And I wasn't even sexually active or attracted to anyone then. And I was thinking, what does that mean? How do they know? What am I? Like, it was really confusing. And it all just sort of spiralled from there. I think I just got labelled at it because I was... Are you saying that they knew before, the, they before knew, you knew? I don't know why. They knew. But I think they based it on, you know, just being a bit different and not being good at sport, not being, you know, the typical growing up here in Australia with that mateship and that football culture and all that sort of stuff. Like, a lot of gay guys, I didn't fit in. I wasn't able... To do it, but I was had one thing that was for me, Susie. I was always quite a big build um, and quite muscular, and I think they were a bit scared to do anything physically. I only got physically attacked once, but that kept me. That kept them away. Ah, because yeah. I was imagining because you are not in any way feminine, mm. so I was thinking maybe you were able to, you know. Stay firmly and safely in the closet all those years, but actually they were able to tell. They were able to tell. It was really weird. They were able to tell. I don't think they knew what it meant either. They probably learnt the term from someone else and thought, let's just label someone who's a little bit different with that term. But I remember distinctly the the year and standing there when they first used that term gay. And I remember thought, what does that mean? What, what, Back in those days, boys were so sensitive to this. Yeah. I, it was I Every don't... little thing was a gay thing. But how did you go? Go in Singapore, though, you know, being at a <laughs> boys' school. I mean, that sounds horrific. Yeah, it was, really, it was really hard, I think. But I think when you're in the middle of it, you kind of think that, the teenage years are hard anyway. Like mm. you, you kind of kn- knew that people were going through uh, challenges of their own. But I guess the, the the different dimension was that a lot of stuff that I was going through was a secret. Mm. So you, you didn't you didn't kind of have people that you could confide with. And when I moved to um, a higher level of education so when i was 17 18 uh there were girls in that school and i think i was able to get some closer friends and even though we didn't talk about sexuality very much it was very clear to them that i was more like one of them and um the more generous girls were just kind of uh a lot more welcoming than i had experienced before so just as you were talking i was just thinking about how um you know at primary school and even early high school i always had more female friends um um, than I did guys at the time and and it was just such a comfort because we had really good friendships and I'm just thinking that like to be in your shoes and to not have access to you know to only have boys as friends I don't know if I would have coped yeah it was a difficult time and you kind of grow up and I think it's become a real uh, fundamental part of me where I always feel on the outside um, and s- you know, in the past, when you're young, I guess feeling on the outside was an uncomfortable feeling. But you've, are you kind of grow into uh, appreciating that part about yourself that you're somehow unusual. The difference is um is a good quality to have. Mm. So, yeah. So even these days, when people say, "Oh, uh, the, the world has become a lot more accepting," uh, I, I acknowledge that and I do see that. But at the same time, I kind of 
am very comfortable being different and, uh, and I don't want to let that go. No, definitely not. Now, how did you, uh, w- w- today we are going to be talking about Turn Up the Volume, which is on ABC iView. What did you think of it? Let's talk about Turn Up the Volume. It takes place in Footscray, just west of Melbourne CBD, where Vietnamese restaurants and African hair salons take pride of place in the town centre. A music camp for teenagers is underway, and in the first episode, we are witness to the formation of The Volume, a five-piece band consisting of four girls and one non-binary person, all budding musicians just leaving their childhoods behind to begin their journey of self-discovery. These five characters are strangers to start, but over ten moving episodes all available now on ABC iView we see them become friends and through each other's eyes form understandings of who they are as individuals ready to cut the apron strings they all have real struggles that viewers of any age would readily identify with we watch them deal with issues around self-esteem with complications relating to cultural identity their problems with mental health to deal with and so forth yes these people might only be 13 or 14 but their concerns are not to be scoffed at Hanks is the name of the non-binary character and their struggles with coming out are painstakingly depicted so that viewers can attain a deep appreciation of challenges faced by trans youth everywhere. There are queer infatuations that occur in the show but those are handled almost too subtly perhaps waiting for them to grow a little older before a more daring attempt could be made at exploring those intimacies. Even though Turn Up the Volume is clearly made for a much younger audience than this Gen Xer I am not ashamed to say that it made me cry more than a couple of times. There is a sensitivity and tenderness that we probably don't usually associate with programming that targets this age group. I found myself really caring for these young ones and hope to see the story continue in a second season very soon. Warren, I wonder if you had a similar response to turn up the volume or do you have a heart of stone? (laughs) No, I I did have a very similar response. I've got to say I sat down and I watched all 10 episodes, not in one hit, but I loved it, Susie. I really loved it i almost i almost wanted to be part of the friendship group i just found it so good and so genuine it was it was a really good production in terms of um abc who put it together i loved seeing footscray you know footscray and 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 the food that we go there sometimes (laughs) and eat you know all the the cultures that mix over there i mean footscray is such a beautiful place and seeing it portrayed in a series where these kids are growing up in footscray was wonderful it was so good you recognize the market you recognize the restaurants i loved it i loved all the characters in it i did fall in love with hex i loved vivi i thought vivi was great in fact i loved all the characters i thought it was great and yes Susie, i found a few tearful moments watching it definitely that was it was quite invoking in that regard yeah the performances were so great the writing was so um, sensitive and clever mm. and the direction kind of gave them a lot of time to make sure that um, we get the nuances that it wasn't just paying lip service to the th- topics that they were covering I think they really allowed the young actors to to get to places that um, were able to express very deep things that I think as grown ups of our age we kind of don't expect these young people to be able to express so I think it was really good to watch and I found it really affecting it really surprised me yeah, I think so too. I think you know there's so many themes that it explored and we're talking about turn up the volume which you can catch as part of ABC iView. There were so many themes in it. You know, you've got you've got Hex who's saying, you know, you can never have too much love because they're obviously, you know, they're not out to their family, to their grandparents that they're living with. And then you've got Breeze who's saying, "Oh my goodness, my parents, my gay dads wrap me up in so much cotton wool and protect me that I'm not experiencing life." So, there were all sorts of experiences in there and then we had the you know that they, they even talk about the death of a parent and we've got that happening with one of the characters and and i found that quite touching that was one of the the sections that kind of upset me because i mean um you know i i i've still got my parents but i did lose my brother when i was 19 years old and you know when that happens and you lose a close member of your immediate family when you're that age you don't necessarily get to grieve the focus is and so it should be i suppose on the parents and the impact that it has on the parents but in this show they talk about the impact as well that it has on the kids who who, you know who suffer this loss and i thought that was really good of abc to look into that as well with all the other stuff that they talk about yeah it it was very brave themes i think to sort Mm. of 
to kind of uh, express through these young characters because I, I do feel like a lot of the themes are uh, quite grown up and um, obviously young people go through them but we're just not used to storytelling for them that, that goes into these sort of harder places but at the same time a lot of us dealt with a lot of great humour the, the bit that I really loved was about Vivi kind of um, coming to a realisation that she hasn't got much understanding of her Asian heritage and That's right. she goes and she goes and learns to play the erhu which is a very difficult instrument and that, those things were <laughs> really funny and you know she was trying to learn the languages and all that I found that really moving because I walk around Australia and I think well oh, isn't it great we see a lot of people of different skin tones these days and then sometimes you see young people and I I wonder you know I, I feel like they are Australian but it would be such a shame for them to uh, not be in touch with the, the uniqueness of where they have come from and it's it's so great that Turn Up the Volume spends uh, a couple of episodes exploring those sort of ideas. Absolutely. And, and I think also the fact that, you know, we make a lot of assumptions, don't we, about people, you know, and, and that is portrayed in the series as well when it's assumed that Vivi can speak Chinese. And, of course, she can't, and that's what she's embarrassed about. But her brother, on the other hand, doesn't care and says, you know what, no, I can't speak it. And I tell him. I can't speak it. But I did. I love the way that Vivi tried to get in touch with it. I was going to ask you, Susie, did you find when you moved here, did you lose touch with your culture from Singapore? Oh, yeah. I was already in my mid-twenties. Um, but what I felt at that time was a, a real need to assimilate. I didn't quite understand sort of the colonisation aspect of it, but I just felt like, all right, you choose to live in a different country you've got to try as hard as you can to uh, understand their culture and and behave in a way that's appropriate to the culture i remember spending i think it was a, a real couple of years maybe where i was hardcore changing my accent and changing my vocabulary because i was just tired of people misunderstanding or not really understanding what i was saying mm. um yes yeah, so it was really funny like kath and kim coincidentally was on tv oh. and uh, <laughs> And did you try yeah, you to speak know, like Kath and Kim? I found that if you tried to speak like them, you would understand where the vowels were. Uh -huh. You know, it was all very exaggerated. So it was like a teacher who was really good at explaining what the vowels sound like. So the exaggeration, like me emulating the exaggeration, got me to change my accent. Um, so I do remember going through things like that. And um, I understand why I did it. And certainly I... I probably didn't have much of a choice, but uh, hopefully those things are, are a bit less uh, uh, less of a ish an issue right now. We're chatting with Susie Wrong about Turn Up the Volume, which is on ABC iView. Susie, I was quite. I think the production was uh, aired on ABC Me. I think uh, you know, in some ways, I was a bit disappointed. I feel like it's it's so good to see that it could be on the main ABC channel. Yeah, I, I, I was, like I said, I was surprised that it spoke to me so intimately and which is why, you know, um, I kind of pick quite unusual things to cover in this, in this little Tuesday slot because I think shows like these, um, you know, marketing can be very, uh, typical in the way that it, it, it functions, right? It, mm. it, it kind of targets uh, places in the market that it identifies and then it kind of goes this goes on this hamster wheel that repeats uh, the ways things are uh, marketed. But really, this one should should reach out, to hopefully be able to reach a wider audience. And, and with iView now, hopefully it's on iView for a, a longer time, so lots of people can discover it. I love the way they dealt with, uh, you know, teenage crushes as well. I think, you know, one of the characters breeze falls in love with one of the other characters brothers and it's so lovely and it just reminded me as a kid you know, i had this crush i don't know why but i had this crush on this girl in high school and i you know and i mean identify as a gay man but i had this i can't tell you how powerful this crush was as a kid and it just took me straight back by watching this show on abc it took me straight back and you know this girl wasn't interested she went off with someone else i was so heartbroken <laughs> So I don't think there are any emotions <laughs> as intense as a teenage crush. I think so too. It's something that, I don't know. It's they are so overwhelming. They, they take you over. Yeah. Uh, I remember they, they would take you over for years. I remember I, was, I had a crush on someone that didn't know I existed for probably a year and a half. <laughs> it was outrageous. Did, and eventually, did anything happen? 
No, the, the person, like I said, the person never knew I existed. Oh, I was so never. terrified. Oh. <laughs> Something else that um, they talk about in there, which is quite a sensitive topic, and I love the way that it deals with it, it is turn up the volume on ABC iView that we're talking about, is, you know, Hex struggling with gender identity, and it's such a sensitive topic. And and uh, one of the characters, Ginger, of course, offends Hex and says something that offends Hex. And I thought, well, um, you know, and, and, and she copped it, I suppose, because she did say the wrong thing. But it made me realise, you know, sometimes we do slip up, don't we? We do say the wrong thing and we don't mean to and we don't, you know, we try and make an effort, but sometimes we do slip up. And I just love the way that the show sort of brought some kindness into it and how to deal with such a situation where something isn't deliberately done, but there is something sensitive and it's easy to upset someone as well. It was really good. It was really good. The performance just told you everything. Like the writing didn't have to be too obvious or, t- or the writing di- wasn't explaining a lot. It was just through the way Hex's face was changing through that mm. scene. It was, mm. it was so, so good to watch. Like I think it was entertaining, but also as a trans person, you could see, you know, oh my God, this young one is, is going through it. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And the other thing is too, there's just warm moments in the whole show where you know, where, for example, Bree's banging on tin pots in Fusco, and it just warms you. It just, I, I got overwhelmed with emotion at that thing. Wow, look at the confidence coming into her now after where she's come from. And I just, I loved it. I really loved it. I would watch it again. I'm glad. I'm glad. Because I was watching it and I thought, it is very young in some ways, but. I, it moved me so much, and I was really hoping that it would move you, move you too. Now, I just got a message in from Scott from um, Flemo saying, Hey, Susie, if your experiences have made you the fantastic human you are today, I say embrace them because you have turned out perfect. How's that? Oh, thank you, Scott. So yeah. have you, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Susie, it is such a good, good series. It is called Turn Up the Volume. You can watch it on ABC iView. What will we be watching next week? Next week, we're looking at TAR, the three-hour Kate Blanchett vehicle now available to buy or rent on any of your favourite streaming platforms. I think it's a brilliant film. It offers so many controversial talking points. So I can't wait to discuss it all with you when I see you next Tuesday. It's very controversial, isn't it? It is. See you then, Susie. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> bye. Joy Drive on Joy 94.9 FM in Melbourne, Joy on your digital radio, iHeartRadio, TuneIn.com or the Joy app. No matter where you are, you can always take Em and Warren with you. 